Welcome to the Winnebago Travato 59K. I don't know what 59K stands for, but I think it's pretty cool. I'll tell you, it's kind of a silly name, I think. I don't know if Winnebago goes by like different Ks, because I've seen different numbers with Ks. Okay. But I will tell you, when you're in the market for a van and you see 59K, you're like, oh, that's awesome, that's 59K? And you're like, oh no, that's over 100K. The model's 59K. <laughs> All right, get in here. It's super cool though. I joked last night when I was making dinner that I actually have more counter space in this van than I do in our Airstream, and here's why. First of all, you have your sink, your two burner stove top, lots of things fit back here, even when you have this up with your view. And you have this, but then wham, this comes out. I wouldn't actually use this as a real cutting board because you know I would want to keep it nice and pretty. But you could put things here. And when Mark's laptop is in here, you have another table. So look at this. This is a lot of space. Anybody who RVs understands this is huge space. So anyway, the kitchen, I give it an A plus. Okay, so up here is like a little storage area, which has been pretty handy. And then it has these little guys right here. Let me put one up so that you can see. I'll put the hair like this. And then I throw that down here like that. And I will tell you, the use of magnets in this RV is pretty amazing. In fact, I wish more RVs used magnets because, oh, they're so convenient. So let's see if this is the right side. Let me get the left side so I can show you. Um, this is pretty handy up here. I must say that there's a broom up here, which is kind of nice, and some cleaning supplies. Okay, so let's see. This is it right here. So watch, this goes down there like that and magnets hold it in place. That was easy. It's it's really easy at night. Um, let me come sit here and tell you about driving this thing. Um, probably you can see all the, I don't know. That is one of the drawbacks that I've experienced is I have hit my head on this just because I'm wearing a hat. Um, Trish discovered that there's a light right here. Keep this on, maybe you'll hit your head less. I mean, I hit my head once where But hats are dangerous for stuff like that. But then you just saw me getting in here and moving the seat around and things like that. That is a bit frustrating and probably because we have grown used to being inside bigger RVs. And as we're gonna say in our review, this serves a different purpose. This serves a different mission. And that's just kind of comes with the territory. But in terms of driving it, you know what I do like is sometimes when you get into the motorized RVs, they do the conversion on some real base model equipment. and. The fact is, this has just been so easy to drive. The turning radius is exceptional. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There's a backup camera. Dude, I tell you. I love this This thing. thing is so nimble. It's crazy. I'm a big fan. Where'd my seatbelt go? Lots of visibility, cruise control, good climate control. We were never hot, right? The air conditioning's fantastic. I like the shifting position here. Cup holders down there. It's just been... It's been easy. So I like that. And I think the thing we've really enjoyed the most is like we went into the Trader Joe's and we just parked in the parking lot. We went down to stand up paddleboard as you saw last weekend, or maybe even in this episode, I don't really know yet, but we just parked in a parking spot. So when it comes to having an RV or a van in this case, that you can park at the trailhead and go, really nothing beats it. Okay, to Mark's point. This is made to be at the location and they know that you are gonna be boondocking, which is like dry camping. You're not going to be hooked up as much as you would in a regular full-size RV. So they have you prepared, check this out, a container that actually fits inside your sink so that you can wash your dishes, do what you need to do, contain that water because you don't wanna fill up your tanks. Put this on top so you're not sloshing around. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Then you have a cutting board totally ready to go. This goes down so you, again, have another full working surface. They just thought of the little things that are really important. The refrigerator is cool too. So um, it's a little dirty right now, but it really fit everything. There's a little freezer in here. I have baggies of ice because, you know, margaritas. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, but it locks down and you have a microwave that you could turn the generator on. So again, full working kitchen, super impressed. Okay, so Trish and I first saw this model when we were out in Florida uh, and we walked inside here and we looked in and we said, oh, they nailed the layout in terms of our opinion because we know 
having RV'd for so long that the number one most frustrating thing when you RV is that you have to reconfigure a space to either work or sleep. And when I looked in here, I realized this is perfect because it's set up for sleeping, but you can also set up this table and you can have dinner here. And there was just a little bit less reconfiguring of a space. Now it's a van, so you still have to reconfigure the seats for the workspace and there's still a lot of negotiating, but it's one less thing to negotiate because these are set up as beds. And I will tell you that they're actually pretty comfortable too. As you know, RV OEM mattresses are not very good. And I really applaud Winnebago Travanto for putting in like almost like boating cushions in a way. I mean, the foam is, the foam is really good. It's comfortable to sit. It's comfortable to sleep. Um, probably the only thing I wish we've spent a few nights in this now or three nights. The only thing I wish it would do is I wish it was on a, a roller, like a slide where I could just slide it out and click two inches so that I wasn't right up against this because it is narrow. And so that means like, if you sleep on your stomach, you like, if you sleep on your back, it's fine, but it'd be just kind of nice if it just slid out and clicked two inches anyway. But then under here is, um, where you keep the, the storage. So we got camping chairs and we got our table. You can see how this works. You know, we didn't really, this bar, there's probably a way to get this table to create kind of a platform. And then maybe you could put these in here You know, we didn't mess around with it, but that might be an option. The other thing is check this out back here. Oops. Hold on. Get it to click up. Hold on. <laughs> oh, please. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. Okay. You go all the way up. It folds all the way down. But anyway, Trish kind of used this, right? Didn't yeah. You oh, I like up like this. I usually have two pillows. So only having one that helped me with my elevation. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um, we're not entirely sure what these are used for. Maybe if you set up the table, you could go like this so that you have something to lean back on when you're eating is what we've kind of decided. Or, you know, you could put it here and lean up. So maybe these are just kind of like floating pillows. They don't really, they don't really stay up, but we just kind of kept them like that. I do believe they're to connect the beds because the, Trish um, says that, but I don't see how they fit in here. Maybe they do. Oh yeah. That. And okay. that little bar right okay. there, All goes, right. the little bar goes across. All right. Yeah. And then you have a big old bed. Look at that. See? Yeah. Okay. So you see? put the table in underneath, right? And that holds it up. And then you probably slide this down like this. Exactly. And voila. And voila, you have like a massive size bed. Okay. Well, then I take back what I said on the sliding. This is pretty cool. The only drawback to that is now you have to set it up. So like, just consider that. And you know, we're going to talk, we're going to talk a little bit about mission when we go to the review, but just consider that when you're picking an RV, when we wake up in the morning in the Airstream and it's time to get up and we like to wake up early, we get right out of bed and we walk into the living room and we turn on our coffee maker. When you wake up in a teardrop, a van, something smaller, again, they serve a different purpose. You lie down and you think, okay, am I ready to get up and start reconfiguring? Am I ready to like start moving things around? Because you know, at nighttime, as you can imagine, you've got, you've got things in and around your feet that all need to be repositioned just to make the coffee. So it's been, it's been a little frustrating. I think you've seen in the videos a little frustrating, but I, again, there's no better type of RV to get you where the action is. So those are just some of the things that you have to deal with in order to have of our, an RV like this. Okay. Storage and bathroom. These are two very important things. <laughs> there are plenty of overhead. I feel like I'm in an airplane here. The exits are on the sides and in the back. Well, you're pretty good at that. Yes. And so, and then when we were putting our stuff up here, I really did feel like I was putting it in an airplane, but I was able to put all of my clothing, everything I brought, you had all your camera gear, mm -hmm. you had your things here, easy access things here and all the kitchen things there. Before we head into the bathroom, I love having these little reading lights. Mm. These are the little things that make your time more enjoyable. You can actually sit here. You can either have your laptop, you have your phone, but you have a little reading light, which is really cool. Yeah. Now the bathroom leaves a little something to be desired, but it's pretty impressive what it can accomplish. I'm going to just keep backing up. There's a shower head up here. So you can literally take a shower outside. How fun is that? And then this is a Well, sink. let's stop there for a minute. Okay. That's really where the van I've realized comes in strong. I think the yeah. whole hashtag van life thing yeah. ultimately comes down to 
the outside shower. Well, I mean, look at you can park wherever you want. You're all by yourself. You could take a little shower. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So um, it's an adventure mobile. And um, anyway, the, I would pull this down, but it's kind of broken. But it comes down, and there's a sink in here. Well, so you, you can see that the hinge right there, the piano hinge, is rusted. Rusted. And so it doesn't hold it up quite right. And so you can wash your hands here technically. But we washed our hands in the kitchen sink. But there's plenty of storage here. This is actually the hanging closet. So if we really did use this rig as our own, we would be hanging our clothes here. So um, there is the potty, which is great. That, to me, is... The best part about RVing is that I never have to use a public restroom. Um, and then you can take your shower head and you can put it over here mm -hmm. and you can take a shower outside. Why don't you show how these doors close? Oh, yes. Okay. And they have magnets, which is really cool. Boom. Boom. Now, I hate to shatter the reality of glamour of hashtag van life, but you cannot roll your windows down in this van because it circulates the air and I swear it just like sucks up every bad smell the bathroom ever had. Okay, that's this RV. They're not treating the tank or there's a or there's a, a, a ventilation issue. That's not a van thing. It's not. That's a this van thing and it's horrifying. It's horrifying. Hey, so, speaking yes. of magnets, can you show the um, privacy thing on that door? <gasps> oh, look at this. This is super cool. Here, wait, hold on. Let me just go down here. Close this up. Make sure I don't slam myself. Look at, a towel can go right here. And again, here are the privacy curtains. You need them at night so that, you know, you don't feel like if you're somewhere where someone can see through your windows. Yeah. But during the day, we just bring them down. It's, like it's this. It's very clever. It's so cool. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to have them just hanging down because this is obviously your potty mm -hmm. area. But the, yeah. the toilet paper gets covered and you can actually take a shower in here too. It's called a wet bath. There's even, if you want to do anything back here at night. Yeah. Boom, a light. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. They just thought of all the little things that keep you happy and like moving forward yeah when you're at an event let's say you're a triathlete or you're you know a hiker or a mountain biker or you want to go out in the woods you have the little things that you need i mean this you can bring this to places you can't bring your big fifth wheel or you wouldn't want to bring your class a sure so anyway. hey shut that door i'm gonna show the ladder Ooh, okay so it has this ladder on here and i'm i have to imagine that that might be a good use of storage that you could put maybe some tule racks up there mm. or a long oh, cylinder up there. up there. So, and then you could get up there very easily because speaking of the exterior now, it is lacking some things. Yes, like where would you put an outdoor rug or I don't know. There's just one space under the chair, under the um, bed to put like yeah. a chair. Mm -hmm. And then what about like a little table or something? Because if you have this most likely and everybody to each his own but most likely you're not staying in an rv park mm -hmm. you're going to the trailhead you're you're going out somewhere um you are a weekend warrior you're going to events and um so anyway why i say that is you're not going to have the picnic table provided for you mm -hmm. like you would at an rv park you're not going to have certain things the little luxury items yeah. that you get at an rv park so up there would be great to store them. So on that note, what I'm thinking we would do if we were to own one of these is I think I would look into a swing away hitch box and I would put the bikes on top of the box. I hope that's not a wasp. Is that a wasp? Solar up here. There's really? a bit of solar. And what's the um, top like? Can you stand on it? Um, I think it's very fragile actually. Okay, so you're standing in the area where you can stand? Yeah, you have to be careful. Okay, but do you think there's there enough there room to put if you didn't do this solar, if you did two smaller solars up there, because solars have come a long way, solar panels, yeah, you could get probably the same amount of energy in that small space up there and put your basket up here. Gotcha. You know? There's really not much to talk about when it comes to outside because there's not a lot of storage. Let's get the awning in. I'll get it in. Oh, you get it in. Oh, oh. automatic! Automatically comes in. Okay, if you're new to RVing, you must bring your awning in before you leave. I can't tell you how many awnings Trisha and I see when we get at an RV park that are all, there's no tow vehicle there or there's no vehicle that's being towed and we come back and their awning is all mangled up. Like leave a note somewhere that says bring your awning in before you go because just a little gust of wind can bust those doors. So this is automated. 
as you just saw. It felt the wind and it brought it in. Pretty nice. All right, let's go back to the. Whoa. All right, let's go back to the control area here. So there's really not much to talk about when it comes to the exterior stuff because there's not really a lot of storage. It has a 30 amp connection. In fact, there's a little storage up front behind the passenger and driver's seat where we keep the um, power cord. Power cord. It has the ZAMP Solar. I'm guessing this was OEM. It has a generator. All I do is hit start one time and it runs through an auto gen start. Trish and I did this on the side of the road just to use the microwave because we were just absolutely starving. Um, this Truma, this is the heating system plus the hot water heater and a bit, there you go. There's the generator that's starting up. And then here's the propane switch. It has tank heaters, an inverter. I don't know how much the inverter is. I'm guessing, I don't really know. I'm guessing probably 1200 or something like that. That usually is a standard OEM wattage. Wattage? Yeah, for an inverter. Um, you know, that's enough to run like a coffee maker individually if you're not running anything else. So we can turn off the inverter and uh, the generator's on. The tank system doesn't really work in terms of, uh, you know, the levels of the tank system. Most RVs don't, but once you get a little bit of experience, you stop looking anyway. When you say that, you mean like the gray and the black. Your water, yeah. your fresh water Fresh water is usually, usually pretty accurate because it's fresh water and the sensors usually work, but the black tank, you, know, you just heard the microwave go on, that's because of the generator. The black tank just gets a little gucked up and the sensors get all messed up and they stop working. So, all right, so turn off the generator. But I'll tell you, it's been handy to have a generator. So if you've got a couple, you got a couple lithium batteries or uh, maybe some AMG batteries, a little bit of solar and an onboard gen, you're set up. Yeah, first time we got our Battleborn batteries, we were like, whole new It was world. a game changer. It was yeah. a game changer, yeah. Especially when you're working remotely, because then you could just keep going. Yeah, Doesn't you matter. wanna get stuff done. All right, so we wanna provide a little bit of review, and if you saw the last episode, you know that we had some- Let's not talk about that. Setbacks, okay? <laughs> and I think a, uh, some of that was due to the fact that it was a rental yes. and not our rig. And I do think it's important to distinguish that. You have to get used to your rig. You have to find all the little things that are very annoying and solve those problems. Like I wouldn't hit my head on this RV if we owned it like after the th third day. Right. I just know. You know to duck. <laughs> exactly. Right. So I guess all that to say is any RV, no matter what it is, from a truck camper to a teardrop to a fifth wheel to a toy hauler, class A, class C van, it takes a little bit of time mm -hmm. to get into a bit of a rhythm and don't make any harsh conclusions in the beginning because it is hard. Yes, well, and I think you also going slow is helpful because mm -hmm. we're like, you know, one of the times you hit your head, you were just like, I need the cord. And you're like, I know. you jammed yourself in there, you poor <laughs> thing. You just like, like went down his neck. Yeah. So anyway, so just go slow because when you are dealing with bigger rigs and mm -hmm. things like that, you can actually hurt yourself. Yeah. And so you want to just, Take your time, get used to your rig. It's okay. In the very beginning, it mm -hmm. really is all about the rig because you're learning it. Yes. And then your rig can start serving you. And that's what I want to talk about with this van. Okay. Van life is totally about serving you while you're doing your activity. Yeah, it was a, kind of a, um, a conclusion that Trish and I came up with as we were going around, you know, because we're driving this, we're evaluating, we're thinking about it, mm -hmm. we're talking about who you know, who has a van. Who's the perfect person who's, for this? And, and by no means are we saying this is the only person. Right. But generally speaking, we were thinking to ourselves, this type of RV is so great for someone that's actually not really interested in being an RVer. Maybe they're an ultra hiker or a trail runner. Mm -hmm. Maybe they go to dog shows. Maybe they use it to get across the country to go see family. Meaning right. the purpose is actually not the RV. The purpose is their other hobby. Well, it's bringing everything you need to the exact parking space. And that's what I mean parking space. You mm -hmm. can be at the trailhead. You can be at Trader Joe's. You can yeah. be in a real parking lot with all the things. So yesterday we went to go paddle boarding mm -hmm. and the area, if we had had our Airstream in our truck, we probably wouldn't have been able to bring our truck and leave it where we did, or mm -hmm. we wouldn't have everything we needed in our truck. Instead, we have this van we park it exactly where we mm -hmm. need it. We have everything we need, a change of clothes, the paddle boards, mm -hmm. everything. I mean, using the Airstream example, or let's just say a truck and trailer, or really anything other than a van, by the time we would have found a campsite, figured out where we want to stay, mm -hmm. got disconnected, put things away and locked up, we would have missed the window to paddleboard yesterday. Yes, right. right. And so um, when last, or a few days ago, last weekend's episode, when we were at Watson Lake, 
there was this, you know, the, uh, what is it called? Like the Coca, not the Coconino 250, but the Coco something 250. Yes. 250 mile race. And um, this guy comes running up and takes him. He says, can I take a video of your van? You're on, he's on this race. And he goes, oh yeah. And he was sending it to his partner because he's like, this is the future. Right. Meaning he's into running and he looks at this as a way for him to be at the trailhead to serve his hobby. And right. so that's just something that was a little overwhelming to us in terms of a conclusion as we were as we were doing this, that, that this really does support someone's other passion. Yeah, you can't compare a towable RV that has the space and you're not reconfiguring it. Mm -hmm. So there's an easiness to our Airstream yeah. that we take for granted until we came in here and we're like, Ah, this is a little bit frustrating because if you want to sit over there, you've got to turn it just the right way. You've mm -hmm. got to have the table out just the right way. You know, you just need things. It's different. Yeah. And so, but you have to remember what is your mission? Mm -hmm. So when you go to look for an RV, whether it's towable, whether it's a class A motorized van, whatever it is, consider what your mission is and how many people are on that trip and what do the people in your trip most appreciate because you'll lose members of your family mm -hmm. or the people that you want to travel with if you don't evaluate that first and find the right rig for that purpose yeah okay other than that um what else about the review well out of the three rigs that we've mm -hmm. done so far, because this is coming last, we rented a huge diesel pusher Class A, which was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. We did a Class C, which left a little something to be desired, but only because it was like in a rental... Corporate rental. Yes, and so it was like kind of falling apart, but I've seen other Class Cs that are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, and this van, I have most liked the van. And I most, <laughs> and I most liked the Class A. Yes. Because it had the space... And it was like a castle. It was. And it had, it had the space. It had the amenities. But remember that for our, our mission, you know, we, we enjoy RVing not for the solitude and the camping. A lot of people do. Mm -hmm. We enjoy RVing so that it can get us across the country so that we can see different people and we can experience different things. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's about how do we bring the luxuries of RVing home. and home with us so that we could go explore and adventure. Not necessarily to get away and be isolated and enjoy the solitude and be like, you know, BLM for 14 days. That's such an important distinction mm -hmm. because if you get advice from someone that loves dry camping and they love solitude and you're into, you know, looking at different cities or going across the country, mm -hmm. you're going to be led down the wrong path. So it's very important to know the type of RVer you are getting feedback from. Yes. And you should know that we're biased to towable RVs because I like trucks and yes. I like towing and we like the separation of a truck and trailer because we like, uh, I like driving my truck and then when we get set up, I get out of the truck and we get the Airstream or any towable RV set up and it just kind of feels like home to us. Right, you're so not looking our, at the driver's wheel. That's our bias. But this season is about motorized RVing and if I included my mini temper tantrum in the last <laughs> episode, this is the last RV we'll be renting. So, you know, just know that there's more to come. Um, let's see, this is, uh, in this video we're doing the review and then um, we finally have got the cabin exterior renovations done. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people have asked for, you know, how's the vacation rental going? What tips do you have for that? So we wanted to do a video on that. Mm -hmm. And we also want to do a recap on some things to know for renting because these three experiences have shared oh some do's and don'ts when it comes to renting. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, well, and then... And, and then we gonna, have a surprise for you. And then you. we have a surprise. We're going to go, go across the country and we're going to show that. So that's coming. So a few ta technical, tactical videos and then back to the adventure on the other side of this amazing country we live in. Yes. Anything else you want to No, share? just we thank did? you so much for being here with us and, uh, you know, sending us your comments and your emails because we appreciate your perspective and we always learn so much. Yeah. So we feel a huge sense of gratitude being mm -hmm. part of the RV community and you are part of that and you make our experience special. So thanks for being here. And we'll see you next Sunday. And maybe now we'll include a little bit about getting down through Payson and returning this RV and getting back up to the cabin. But that is it for the tour and review section of this video. <laughs> this is what you do with all your things when you give a van tour. They all have to go outside <laughs> or you wouldn't see anything. <laughs> hey, talk about that. That's the coolest oh. thing ever. Oh, oh my gosh, it is the coolest thing ever. It's like, um, I don't know, like $20, $25, and it clicks to the side. I can't do it right now because it's full, but it clicks in and goes totally flat. It's like this flat. You can store it but like in between the tiniest yep. little space. 
and it collapses. But we use that for groceries. Well, we, we use did, that for other now stuff. it's pretty much laundry, but. But we use it, for, we can use it for other stuff. You can use it multiple purposes. Like so, going to the, putting your towels, going to the beach, and like yeah. it's all, it folds down really nice. It folds down really nice. We've had it since it literally up. season one, so it lasts too. Yes, it lasts forever. We'll put it on our Amazon page because it's awesome. That and the dry camping coffee situation are two of our faves. I only want the best for you, that's true, make no mistake. In time you'll see the best of me, you're clearing up the rain. Never give up Reaching for love We do. We picked someone up along the way. Bob. I don't know. I like Bob the Bear. Okay. You don't like Bob? I don't know. We have to see. Okay, I don't know. We mentioned that we just finished the exterior renovations of the cabin. And we actually just painted it green. And we added, uh, added the fence and adding some red wood trim around the windows. Anyway, the f we've been in the market for a welcome bear. Yes. And we were driving through Payson and Trish says, hey, there's welcome bears. So, <laughs> and so we came over there and we found Bob. Okay. Very careful. Very careful. Do you have it? Yep. Oh, I don't. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Oh. Oh my gosh. All right, you go up first. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Bob goes right here. Okay. Oh, easy. Let's just pick up Bob. Well, don't do that. You'll get sap all over your clothes. There. Oh, you want it facing this way? Yes. Shouldn't he be? Up. Shouldn't he be facing out? Right here. Look, Just like that. Up the stairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me center. Let me center. Look so in the green matches the house. Awesome. You're safe. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, that he is pretty sappy. I got sap on this. <laughs> um, so anyway, okay. Welcome to your new house. That's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Let's go look at this stain. 